Hi, my name's Scott. I'm a professional food photographer based in the UK. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I edit my food photographs. Now, the photo behind me was taken a long time ago. It was one of the first times I'd ever worked with a stylist. I didn't really own the right gear at the time. So hopefully this is the best way to give you an example, because if you're watching this video, you're probably new to it as well, or at least new to food photography. So rather than pulling out some elaborate photograph, which we spent thousands of pounds achieving, this was done in a warehouse with one flash, a 35 millimeter prime, and a Canon 5D Mark II. I was really happy with this image when I took it. However, looking back on it in hindsight, it's not perfect, but we're gonna work with what we've got. This is the raw file. So I shot this at 125th of a second, F3.2 and 160 ISO. 160 ISO is just the best ISO that the Canon 5D Mark II has. So they were my settings. I should have been at a higher F-stop, maybe 5.6, maybe F8. If we zoom in here, we'll see that this orange is completely out of focus and these are nice and sharp. A bit more depth of field would have done me the world of good. I had plenty of lights at the time, so there's no excuse. I was just new and inexperienced with food photography. So this is how I edit my food photographs. There's loads of ways of going about this, but this is my way. I also don't actually use Adobe Lightroom anymore. I'm now working with Capture One. I find it much better, but for this video, we'll crack on. So whenever you see the screen do this, the way I'm achieving that is by pressing the Alt key while selecting the slider I'm on. Now I can see here that I've I've completely fluffed it with this orange and that to me looks like, yeah, I've pretty much burnt that out. So the general exposure for me is fine. We can go a little bit brighter, a little bit darker. I think a little bit darker in this particular instance. There we go. So 10th of a stop down. Now I don't touch this contrast slider. I'm not gonna use the contrast slider in this one. And the reason is this, if you use contrast, the blacks and the whites come apart at the same speed. And for me, the chances are that I'm not going to want that. I can already see that the whites in this image which is this spot here. And then if we scroll up a little bit onto the sugar, they're very hot. So I'm not gonna to want to add any more to that. So I'm gonna leave the contrast at zero and by double clicking on the word, it brings it back to where you need it to be. Now, rather than running through this in a chronological way, the first thing I do is reduce the vibrancy ever so slightly. I shoot with Canon. Every Canon camera needs the vibrancy reducing. I don't know why, they just seem to love adding vibrancy. The next thing I'm going to do is play with the clarity. Now. When you're a beginner photographer and you find the clarity slider, it will ruin all of your images. You'll end up with everything looking like this. What we're looking for is something a little bit more tame. So I'm gonna go up to plus 32 and then bring it back until I can no longer see what I've done. So that's about right for me. Now texture is a new slider. This didn't exist when I was previously using it. So if I take the texture all the way down, it softens it a bit all the way up. It sharpens it sort of a lot. Now I'm gonna go into more detail in all these sliders in separate videos. But this is just a general work for assuming you know, or at least you can grasp the basics as we go along. There we go, that looks about right to me. So there we go. This is where we are so far. The next slider down is a tone curve. I don't really mess with that. I sort of leave that as it is and I'm all happy. But where the magic happens is the HSL color sliders down here. Starting off with saturation. I've never seen an orange that orange. So the first thing we're gonna do is play with the saturation. I'm gonna click on this little tab here bring it over to this orange, which looks a little bit fluorescent and just drag it down until it looks bad there. I'm gonna slowly come up again. I always find it's good to go too far and then bring it back about there. There, there, there we go. So that's now my orange color. Now I'm gonna to go to the blues in this background here as well because what we can do is completely desaturate them, which gives us a very different look, or we can completely push them all the way up, which obviously looks awful. Now we want somewhere in between. I want a bit more blue for more of an autumnal film and it, autumnal feel even. And it also just really adds some pop here. There we go. Now we're going to the luminance and this is the brightness. So we know that the oranges are too bright. So we're gonna darken those down again. You can see I've gone too far. And I bring it back up again until we don't get any of that bizarre banding we had going on about there. Same with the yellows, we'll drop those. You can see again, that's moved all the yellow. I'm just gonna bring it up until that banding comes back to normal. Now it wouldn't normally look this dramatic. Um, the reason it is looking so dramatic is because I completely messed up the exposure. But chances are, if you're looking for a video like this, you've done something similar. And it always helps to know how to fix these things. 
So if we go into the blues now for the background, we can really darken that background. That's what I'm going to do. And that's another way for adding contrast to the image. So we're going to close that down for now. I don't generally mess with the hue. The hue's like a, the hue's its own video. It's a nightmare. So sharpening. I'm going to zoom in for this because this little box over here doesn't really help me at all. Now we'll press the Alt key and we begin to sharpen. There we go. About there. I'm going to make the radius nice and fine at 0.5 if this lets me go that far. Yes, it does. And then we're going to do the masking. Apart from that's not working. There we go. trying to do this sort of almost refine where the sharpening is occurring. So if you take this all the way down, you'll see it's just we get a snowstorm of sharpness all over the place. Whereas what we're trying to do here is bring that somewhere more reasonable. About there. Let's just zoom in. That looks okay to me considering how I shot the image. And you can see the top of this orange here is falling out of focus where this one here is perfectly in focus. That's just a rookie mistake with flat lays. So we'll leave the detail slider alone for now. Now, I wouldn't normally do this, but in this particular instance, a wide angle lens was not required for this. So I'm going to add the profile corrections. There's a bit of delay on this computer because I'm running a million and one tasks at the moment. But there we go. This is going to show us you know, the it, it takes away some of the bowing. In this instance, I think it works normally. I think it takes away the characteristics of a lens. So that's before. And that's after. Now the transform slider is no use to us in this particular shot, so we'll leave that there. But what it is of use to us is the grain. Now I don't actually like Lightroom's grain that much, but I do believe that almost every image can benefit from grain, especially food, because we don't want that digital sharpness and that extreme clarity. We're looking for something a bit more almost romantic about the image. So digital doesn't particularly lend itself to that. Now, I'm going to do a crop on this image as well. And the reason is because it's going to be the thumbnail for this video. Let's just get that crop in there quickly. There we go. That's nice. And it's going to come in a little bit from this side. So there's a lot of empty space there that we don't need. And don't be afraid of slicing the tops of things. There we go. Now, the last thing I'm going to add here is a vignette, just to bring the eye in, because I've got all this space up here, which is a bit too bright. I'm just going to add a really hard vignette, and then I'm going to come in with my brush. And we're just going to brush this area down a little bit, because it's a bit distracting. There's nothing there. It's bad composition on my part. All right, let's pull that up a little bit there. And then we'll get this, the gradient. Pull that along. There we go. So in this shot here, we can see the before and after with the left being the before and the right being the final image. Now we've dealt with some of the color issues, especially of this orange here, which was looking a bit luminous and more just generally gone wrong. We haven't really managed to get rid of the clipping. We could use some Photoshop there, but to be honest, I'm happy with it. It's fine. The main things we've done here is we've brought about a nicer level of contrast. We've really pulled the blacks and the shadows in. So we've really darkened the image. We've kept the highlights sort of where they are, tried to control them a bit. But the main difference we've made here is we've brought the shadows in. Now this doesn't work for every image. Each image is its own entity. And I'm gonna try and edit a few different images in different videos, sort of show you how you can do different things with different scenarios. Now we've cropped it for 16 by nine aspect ratio. That's because I need a thumbnail for the video. And um, it works quite nicely as well with this composition. The vignette really brought the whole thing together and just playing with the colors ever so slightly has just made the whole thing look a bit more polished and given it a little bit more pop. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it shows you how we can edit the images just to bring that little bit of extra life out of them. We've gone from an okay image here to something that really pops. Yes, it's an old photograph, but I still think it's slightly relevant now. It's not the best image I've ever taken, but it was when I was starting out in food photography, so I'm still learning. It was very much a learning process for myself and the stylist I was working with at the time. She was new as well. So we were sort of finding our feet. Now, the editing I've done today is really specific to this image. So I'm going to do a few different images, some portraits, some more food photos, and sort of show you how this all relates differently in a different context.
So thanks for stopping by this time. Please do subscribe, hit like. If there's something you want to see more of, let me know in the comments and I'll see you all next time.